addressing modes. What's your address? This is another uh, silly lead-in, kind of. But it has to do with the Internet. The Internet's the interwebs and how they works. So, if you computers, if you Internets, you've heard about IP addresses, right? That little... What is it? 323 hex characters? So a total of eight characters in your IP address. The media talks about this IP address. You see it all over the place. You see it as if it's a security risk. Don't let people know your IP address. VPN, it will keep you secret. So this has to do with internet security. It is the deep layers of security that aren't discussed because the more people know about it, the more they can poke at it. So what does this mean? The internet, decades ago, ran out of internet protocol addresses, IP addresses. Long ago it became a major challenge in what to do about this. So inside of these protocols, it's called the OSI layer, Operating System Interface layer. New designs were put into this. And something called a MAC address, Machine Address Code. That code is hardwired in your phone. It's hardwired in your computer. It is not easy to mask or fool or play with because it is in layers of the operating system most developers can't access, don't access, or don't want to. These are the sublayers, the artificial intelligence buried in the layers of communications protocols that makes the internet work. Because of running out of IP addresses and the history, the need for those IP addresses, this MAC address idea came up. So how do you see your MAC address? It's kind of the same way that wherever you log in sees your MAC address. A telephone is one example, has one MAC address for the phone. That is your identifier. When you log into your banking, that is the number your bank is looking for, not your IP address that ties you to a physical device out there it's an address for your physical advice you probably don't fully understand and yet it's there that is a small piece of the security loops wrapped around global internet banking it's something we do I traveled for Europe in Europe for three months and really never had to break out cash other than you know tips and change type of money my global u.s credit cards i had extra security on them blah 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 but to get to that you've got to have an address so this mac address is much more important in your life than you know it's like your home address, the hard home address that identifies your house or your apartment, only it's different. So that little address is out there. That little address is how the bank and other authentication pieces, it's how the bank knows that you are you. There might be a handshake of an email or a text message when you log in. All these routes are pretty well mapped and understood and expected. You'll fail the security step if you don't do one of these things for your credit card use. When you're done with your credit card use, you could go to your bank account and see what happened and make sure that what went on went on there. And you walk away with a reasonable confidence what happened happened, what it's counted counted. So,
We can buy things online. We can track down to the minute where it is in routing history, when it started being shipped in China to when it shows up at your door. Yet, we can't use technology to vote. We can't use technology for a lot of reasons. So, there's a simple intro to the complexities of internet addressing protocols. Now understand, I grew up with DECnet, DeUnanet, hooked to an IBM token ring, and <laughs> talking in Fortran to whatever the friggin' IBM side was. Don't care. My messaging worked. <laughs> so, network segmentation. This is somebody else's coursework already out there, but welcome to.